Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church in New London, Wisconsin, especially those of you who may be listening to us on the radio or those of you who access our services online. Uh, we are entering into a brand new year, and as we enter into a brand new year with this new series called Jesus Appears, it's been 400 years of silence. God kept his voice quiet. There was no prophets until John the Baptist appeared on the scene to prepare people for the coming of the Savior. And when Jesus came, he made a big splash. It kind of uh, happened when he was baptized. And we're going to be focusing on that. Jesus appears at his baptism and God marks him as the one. We'll follow the order of service you have printed out for you in your worship folder. We will be celebrating communion in our service today. Our opening hymn is hymn number 384, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. God's blessings on your worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Keep us who are baptized into Christ faithful in our calling as your children and make us heirs with him of everlasting life through your son Jesus Christ our Lord lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson it comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 1, in which the Lord promises to put his spirit on the Messiah, empowering him to be the anointed one, which is what the word Messiah and the word Christ means, to free us from our sins. We see that promise fulfilled when Jesus was baptized. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, <coughs> my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, 
and he will bring justice to the nations. <clears throat> he will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching the islands will put their hope. <clears throat> this is what God the Lord says. The creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll join in singing our Psalm 45b, Great Are the Works of the Lord. Our second reading is in, found in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 38, where God opened Peter's eyes to realize that the Gentiles were to be accepted uh, as members of his family on an equal plane with the Jews. 
And in it, Peter is telling them how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power. And from that moment on, Jesus went around doing good and freeing those who were under the power of the devil. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, <clears throat> announcing the good news of peace through Jesus, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our gospel reading. We'll begin with the gospel acclamation. Our gospel lesson in Matthew chapter 3 is when Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, o Christ. You may be seated as we join to sing our next hymn, hymn 377, To Jordan's River Came Our God, Our Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Has it dawned on you recently that the couple of days that we have after Christmas and the first couple of days that we sometimes make our way through in January can be a bit bewildering? By the time you finally got your Christmas decorations all taken down and boxed up and put back in the attic, by the time you got all the Christmas leftovers out of the fridge and either down the disposal or off to the curb, by the time you finally digested or at least gave away the last of the Christmas cookies, did you just sit on the couch and stare at the wall and say to yourself, What just happened? Christmas can be a blur for us to celebrate. There's so much for us to see and do and to hear and to share that sometimes by the end of the celebration of Christmas, we're absolutely bewildered. What just happened? What did I just see? For Christians who make their way through the Christmas story every single year, we, we're surprised to, to see how often questions like that seem to be at the heart of the story. What just happened? What did I just see? Think how often a question like that comes up in the story of Christmas. The shepherds finally wait, make their way back out to the place where they had left their flocks on that one evening of Christmas the next morning, maybe trying to put the pack, the pieces together and find the lost sheep, saying from one to another, what did we just see? What just happened to us? Or the angels, at least, having fulfilled their divine assignment to proclaim good news to all the world, made their way back to the heavenly locker room to to hold up their trumpets and hang up their hearts and, and say to themselves, what is it that we just saw? What is it that just happened? Imagine sitting in the living room with Mary and Joseph and their brand new baby as as they say adieu to those unexpected visitors who had arrived on their doorstep from the east on camelback as a caravan to say good luck on your way back to wherever it is you came from, watch out for Herod, and, and then turning around and seeing there on the kitchen table the amazing gifts that they had brought with them from afar, gifts of gold and frankincense and of myrrh. And hearing Joseph say to Mary, what just happened? What did we just see? In the 30 or so years that followed those amazing events that happened in and around Bethlehem on the night of Jesus' birth, the question, what just happened, what did we just see, was going to be asked about Jesus over and over and over again. Eventually, after 30 years of obscurity, Jesus would would once again be on the scene and and people would come from far and near to, to try to make sense out of who he was and what he was doing and and to stand there with the crowds as the miracles took place. To follow along with the disciples who heard him preach and, and watched him calm storms and raise the dead. To, to stand there with family and friends who, who, had, who had people that they loved, who had been deaf and blind since birth, suddenly received back their hearing and their sight and asked the question, What just happened? What did I just see? And it all started with a man named John the Baptist. John was there to see one of the most surprising events to have ever taken place in world history. You heard it described in the gospel appointed for this first weekend after the celebration of the Lord's Epiphany. John was Jesus' blood relative. He probably had grown up with his neighbor from up north, and and the two of them had probably spent time together during those 30 years of Jesus' growth and obscurity. Jesus and John were probably buddies, and John probably assumed that he had Jesus all kind of figured out. John grew up to be a prophet and a preacher 
who went off into the wilderness of Judea to call people back to attention and and to call people from every single walk of life to to pay attention to the inbreaking reign of the Lord and the coming kingdom of heaven. John probably thought at this point in his life he had seen it all and heard it all. And then Jesus stepped out of the waters of the Jordan River and the voice of God boomed off the hillsides near Jerusalem. And the Spirit of God himself descended in the form of a dove. What just happened? What did I just see? On this first weekend of the Epiphany season, the Christian church pauses to ponder what is it that we celebrate called the baptism of Jesus? Why, of all people, did he step into the waters of the Jordan River? What does it mean for him that his father spoke and the spirit flew? And more importantly, what does it mean for us? To have in our eyes and in our minds a Savior who was baptized A Savior who himself provides meaning for the most important life moment that's ever happened in your life or mine. When Jesus steps into the Jordan, or when a little baptized baby is baptized as a font, what just happened? And what does it mean? If we look carefully at these words that Matthew recorded us from the third chapter of his gospel, the answer to our question, what does it mean for God to be baptized, what does it mean for me to be baptized, could not be shown to us any clearer. Because as we're going to find out tonight, in the waters of baptism, God himself appears. At the Jordan, the triune God reveals his will for the chosen one. And at the font, the triune God reveals his love for everyone. You know, John the Baptist was a preacher who had a pretty straightforward job. He was the first person to go out as a messenger of the Almighty in four centuries since God had stopped sending his prophets in the Old Testament. God gave John the job of being the forerunner of the great chosen one, the Messiah, who was going to change the story of God's people once and for all. And and God had used John and and through the revelations to his father Zechariah and his mother Elizabeth to, to find out that John's job was going to be to go out and get all of God's people ready for the Messiah's arrival. It's a straightforward job. All John had to do was go out and and get all of Israel to step in line. You see, during the 400 years that God had stopped sending his prophets, Israel's history had changed dramatically, and and people seemed to have wandered completely away from God's will for humankind. They they had bound themselves serving kings that that weren't loyal to God, and, and suddenly it seemed that the people that John was speaking to had all their priorities mixed up, and John kind of had to knock them upside the head. Going out to the wilderness out by the Jordan River, he he began using a process of showing people how important that the the sins and shame that they carried around in their hearts and in their minds needed to be wiped clear so that they were ready to greet the Messiah. And so John came, baptizing in the waters of the Jordan and preaching a message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Everybody got in line, but one person didn't belong. I can't imagine how it must have surprised John to suddenly see on one particular morning out by his preaching post someone whose face he recognized, a long-lost relative who didn't live nearby Jerusalem, but who had come down from the region of Nazareth where he lived. This, This familiar face, of course, was his blood relative, Jesus. And John saw Jesus get in line to be baptized in the waters of the Jordan. It it didn't make sense to John because John understood that Jesus' story was going to be very different than anybody else that he had baptized there in the Jordan. He was baptizing them for repentance and the forgiveness of sins, but but he knew all the prophecies about the Messiah, his his friend and Savior Jesus. He wasn't going to need to, to have his sins forgiven. He didn't have any sins of his own. And you can see John trying to adjust to what he's seeing with his own two eyes. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me? 
Jesus said, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And so John consented. Jesus, you don't have to be here. You don't have to stand in my line to be baptized. Everybody in my line ought to, ought to be in your line to be baptized. You should be the one in charge. You're the one whom God has appointed for this mission. Why is it that you stand in and among all these sinful people and ask me to baptize you? Because it's all part of the plan, Jesus said. I didn't come to boss them around. I didn't come just to swing the sword and to instill fear in the hearts of the people. I came to be their savior. I came to be their servant. John must have wondered why anyone in the world would have opted for such a job. If any of you have been paying attention to politics in the last seven days, you've probably recognized the, the certain frustration going on among a particular political party in, in identifying who their leader is going to be and their, who their representative is going to be. And, and someone might ask, with, with all that conflict and all that mess behind the scenes, why would anyone want to be in charge? Why would anyone want to be the chosen one for that job? Well, the answer, of course, is simple. The guy who has the gavel gets all the power. <laughs> And the fact that they've been arguing over it for 15 votes show you that other people would love to have the power and, and to be able to lead in the way that they choose to lead. But, but Jesus, of course, steps into the waters of the Jordan River and isn't interested at all in the power that comes with being God's chosen Messiah. Instead, he recognizes that what he's about to go through is all part of God's plan. And God speaks to the plan that stretched out in front of the Savior. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. In him I am well pleased. God the Father showed up at Jesus' baptism, with the full understanding of exactly what he had sent Jesus to do, to serve and to suffer and to save. The Holy Spirit shows up at Jesus' baptism and, and motivates and drives Jesus to the next step and the next step and the next step of his, of his mission from, from these Jordan River waters off into the wilderness he goes to be tempted by the devil. The next thing, to heal and proclaim and preach the good news. The next thing, to go back to Jerusalem again and again and, and finally to reach at the end of his journey the suffering and death that would pay for the sins of everyone standing around him in these waters. God saw the plan, and Jesus was willing to go through the plan. Jesus wades into the waters of the Jordan River, fully aware that that plan is going to carry him back through those waters, finally to the place where he dies and rises again. In these waters, God shows you how willing he is to point ahead to the cross an empty tomb. God shows up and reveals his will for the chosen one. I have to say, I wasn't there to see it. I've never been to the Jordan River. And I admit it probably would have been awfully glorious to stand there and to watch God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit suddenly shown up. But that doesn't mean I've never seen it. I've seen God himself appear, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in simple water. Not in Palestine, and not at the waters of the Jordan, but in a neonative intensive care unit in Houston, Texas, where I held a baby that was just seven minutes old and just that big. <laughs> and with a little syringe of water spoke ordinary words over this little tiny guy that, that now is about this tall, he's 11 years old. <laughs> And God showed up. 
I'd never seen God show up in the ways he did in the waters of the Jordan, but I have definitely been blown away by the presence of God when I stood with 13 people on one day at the baptismal font of the church I served in Houston, Texas, members of our Jesus Cares ministry to the developmentally disabled, saw 13 people come to be baptized together with their families in one day. You want to see God show up sometime? Come back tomorrow about 11.30. we got four baptisms taking place right at this font. I haven't ever seen God show up in a human being's life, but I know for a fact that God does that. Because 40 years ago, this weekend, at a baptismal font in Saginaw, Michigan, God showed up. I was there. My twin brother was there. My mom and my dad and my sponsors and his sponsors were there. And God was there. Because that's what happens in the waters of baptism. For 2,000 years, the Christian church has taken upon itself the commission that God himself handed to the Christian church to baptize other people with words very different than John used to baptize Jesus. Not for the repentance and forgiveness of sins, though the forgiveness of sins is fully granted in those waters. Yet, yet now Christians are baptized with very powerful words which God himself has given us to speak. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Words that express the Father's absolute delight in you, in his willingness to adopt you as his child. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, words that demonstrate and recall to our mind the Savior's absolute love for you, as the Apostle Paul told us last week, all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. And as he wrote to the Romans, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? In the waters of the Jordan, God points people's attention forward to the cross. In the waters of our baptism, God points our attention back to the accomplished work at the cross. And there... At a baptismal font, God also demonstrated the absolute power of his Holy Spirit. The life I now live, I live in the body, but I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. From these ordinary words and ordinary water, God makes believers and sends them out into his kingdom in lives of service, empowered and motivated by his own Holy Spirit working within them and garnering faith through them. In baptismal waters, God himself is present. At the Jordan, he proclaims his will for the anointed one. At the font, he proclaims his love for everyone. What just happened? Every Christmas, Christians see it again and again. Jesus appears. And throughout the season of Epiphany that follows, Christians tend to dwell on it to understand it more and more for ourselves. God himself appears in the waters of baptism, in the person of his Son. God, open our eyes to see him each day. And so we pray. Almighty God, before we ever saw you, you saw us and you knew exactly what we needed. Lord Jesus, you knew that every person on earth was covered with shame and needed your perfect righteousness to cleanse them from their sins. You were willing to stand in line to be baptized by John and counted among sinners for us. You were willing to accept the task your Father gave you. You were willing to be chosen by God for the painful plan of salvation so that I could be chosen for God in the joyful truth of salvation. Thank you for what your baptism brings me. Help me to proclaim it to all people. Thank you for what my baptism gives me. Help me to proclaim that to all people as well. By your Holy Spirit, continue to strengthen us through your word and sacraments so that each day we see your grace appearing in your plans for the chosen one and in your love for everyone. Amen. Please stand.
And the peace of God, which goes beyond all our understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Let's join tonight to confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Heavenly Father, your Son fulfilled all righteousness and stood with sinners in the Jordan. Yet he was our sinless substitute. You opened the heavens and declared to us all the world that you were pleased to anoint him as our Messiah, as you have joined us to Christ's death and resurrection by holy baptism and given us your spirit now strengthen our hearts and open our ears to hear your word and rejoice that you have made us your beloved children in him. Holy God, you sent your son as the servant who would show mercy to those who were bruised, faltering, and hurting. Hear us on behalf of those in need of healing and deliverance and be a source of joy to those who grieve. We thank you for the life and faith of Gloria Knazer, whom you called to yourself this past week, and pray that you would grant comfort to her family. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we join uh, both Brian and Colleen Schuttpletz as they celebrate their 56th marriage. And by your grace, <clears throat> they have come this far, and by your grace, you have moved them forward together. We pray that you would sustain and defend them through all trials and temptations as they enjoy your gift of marriage. Help them to love each other with selflessness and service. May they continue to find comfort in your presence, strength through your promises, and perseverance because of your faithfulness. Lord God, your Son, Jesus, is the Christ and the true King of this world. Grant great humility to the rulers of the nations, especially those who govern us, <clears throat> that we may in turn <clears throat> shine as lights in a darkened world, and that through the peace and prosperity enjoyed by our nation, the light of your gospel might continue to grow. O oh God, in baptism we were buried with Christ into death and raised with him to walk in newness of life. <clears throat> we thank you. <clears throat> For, your four, for the four baptisms we celebrate in your house this weekend. As we also partake of Holy Communion, we ask that you would give us hearts which receive Jesus' body and blood with joy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have called your church from every tribe and nation. Grant that your people throughout the world would rejoice in the death and resurrection of Christ and live as those who have died and risen with him in holy baptism. We bring all these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
At this point, as we collect our offerings to carry on the Lord's work, uh, if you would take these connection cards that are in the backs of your pews, the black edged side is for members and the gold edged side is for any visitors. You can place them in the offering basket or hand it to an usher or a pastor on your way out. Please stand as we celebrate the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all your saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate word conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your son's body and blood. Send us your spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which was poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
please stand. Now may our Savior's true body and blood strengthen and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. God's peace be with you always. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. We're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of hymn 930. Go, my children, with my blessing. How many of you were baptized at this baptismal font? Show of hands. Whether you were baptized here or someone else, when you were baptized, you were united with Christ. Christ, our brother, underwent baptism for you and for me. And when you were baptized, God made a special covenant promise to you. He put his Holy Spirit in your heart. He gave you the gift of faith and he has promised never will I leave you never will I forsake you you take that promise home with you there's nothing in this world that can ever happen that can separate you from the love that God has for you in his son Jesus Christ a couple of things to share with you I'll, tomorrow morning in between our services we're going to have another um, informational meeting we want people to get as much information, as much uh, knowledge, and as many questions as they have answered about 
what this will all eventually uh, look like before we begin construction in the next year. Uh, so that'll be an informational meeting between services tomorrow, beginning at 9.15. And then the following Sunday, uh, there will be our qu quarterly voters meeting in which uh, important decisions will be brought and be made. And then after that meeting, there will be another voters meeting to issue another call for a third pastor. And any other announcements? The, the pastoral call meeting is slated for the 24th on yes. Tuesday night. Uh, this forum tomorrow talks about uh, construction contractors, design, finances. We've got things about campaigning that are coming up. So a diverse set of topics for, for us to get up to speed with a busy year that's coming. All right. Well, thank you. Blessings to you in the coming week.